Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Very happy to be connecting with you today. This is Paul Fletcher, and I am a certified master teacher, certified from the Tao Academy. And I'm so happy to be sharing with you some of the wisdom that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity. Today I'll be focusing on the 10 powers of soul enlightenment. So for those of you that just stumble across this, you might find some insightful wisdom that comes from this sharing today. Uh, Dr. and Master Shah, for those of you that do not know, is a world-renowned healer. Uh, for over 18 years, he has been bringing healing literally to the entire world, traveling approximately 11 months a year to various continents and over 50 countries. Uh, excuse me, that's not correct. Probably about 15 countries, uh, but well-known in, in well over 50 countries. And he has uh, uh, over 20 books four of which are number one New York Times bestsellers, but 11 have wit reached the New York Times bestsellers list, four to the number one spot. So he's very well known, very well respected. He's also a philanthropist and a soul who uh, is asked very often to attend the, the events worldwide associated with world peace. And uh, Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity the kind of wisdom that can assist us to move through and past the difficult times that we all find ourselves in. Basic wisdoms and basic teachings such as what is enlightenment or what is the power and significance of love? How do we actually employ love in every aspect of our life? How love can melt all blockages? The other side of that coin, he teaches great wisdoms on the power and significance of forgiveness and so forth. And so this is who this beautiful soul is, Master Shah. You can learn more at the Tao Academy if you'd like. Uh, just type in T-A-O Academy. And Google should help you find that page pretty fast. Uh, but during today's live stream, I'll be talking with you about the 10 powers of soul enlightenment. Uh, now this is not the 10 Da. This is a different teaching entirely. This is actually from the book called Divine Transformation. And for those of you who don't know, this is who Master Shah is. Uh, and so I'll be reading uh, some excerpts from that book to, uh, to further get some uh, uh, ideas and understandings, some deeper understandings about the nature of enlightenment. Just this morning I was on a uh, phone call with a gentleman who had received some significant high-level blessings associated with soul and heart and mind enlightenment. And these blessings help, uh, they basically bring massive, massive amounts of positive messages, positive energy, positive virtue uh, to the person at the level of their soul. And it assists in washing away uh, lifetimes of blockages. But at the same time, uh, when I was doing the reading for this person, why he was having a specific condition in his life, it was quite curious because... Uh, what what I was shown in my spiritual third eye was that heaven could not release all of the positive messages, the positive virtue uh, to him and his soul because there was an area that was not being released and it had to do in his particular case, uh, and I'm sure there's quite a few more than this one area, but this the virtue could not get to him. The positive messages and all of the uh, enlightenment blessings could not get to him because... Uh, he was holding on to a pain from earlier in his life where he had been taken advantage of. And so uh, the, it's kind of like um, if, the, if the cup is full, how can you put in more water? So he has to empty the cup of this pain before the water of life of enlightenment can enter. And so this was his message this morning. So it's interesting to uh, apply some of these higher wisdoms. So let's check in with everybody, and thank you for clicking the share button. We need to have more people here today. So welcome Erica, welcome Rhonda, uh, Aloha, uh, Gina, welcome also to Archana, welcome Wes, welcome Jan, welcome Dan, Aloha Carl, Aloha Nurma, welcome also to Don Brown and Monica. Thank you for your presence, and thank you for coming and sharing. I did not do any pre-posting, so we may or may not have too many people here today. Hard to say. I usually let people know I'm going live. <clears throat> so thank you for your presence. 
Um, so while we wait for Facebook to gather some more people, let's go ahead and connect. And we do that as in this and each and every week by singing the song of love, peace, and harmony. And this has so many deep layers associated with it. Maybe I'll do a small teaching on that. But let us connect. Close your eyes and become fully present. Now we'll ask the beings of light to join us. Thank you, Becky. Dear all layers of heaven, the Tao, the source, dear the creator, God, whatever name you are known by, we love you, we honor you, respect you, we bow our heads in gratitude, and we invite your presence at this time. Dear the soul of all those serving the plan of the light side, we love you, honor and respect you, we bow our heads to you, and we ask for your presence at this time. We ask you to please come, to please join us, to bless today's wisdom, today's practices, to guide us each to further open and develop our hearts. Please bless us to learn and receive the wisdom of the ten powers of soul enlightenment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To the song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes, please turn on. We invite all souls that wish to serve unconditionally at this time to join us to sing this song of love, peace, and harmony for a minute or so to turn, to connect us heart to heart, soul to soul, and prepare us for this wisdom. I welcome Mark Wright. Welcome Sherry. Aloha, Karina. So let us sing one round. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Mandarin Chinese. Wo ai wo xin er ling. Wo ai zlan an li. Rong ling rong er mu shi shang. Shang ai ping on her she. Shang ai ping on her she. And in English. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. I love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you all for your presence. Thank you for joining. Welcome, Burson. Welcome, Glenda. Aloha, Mark and Sherry. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for clicking the share button. So today, we're focusing on the 10 powers of soul enlightenment. For those of you that came in a little late, this is uh, some wisdom from this teacher, Dr. and Master Shah. And the book is called Divine Transformation. We're on page 221, which I'll go into in just a minute. And, you know, when I first met this teacher, it was literally uh, about 11 years ago in Honolulu, Hawaii. I had been training uh, prior to that for about 20 years in the spiritual path. I was in, literally with an enlightened master at that time, a female enlightened master, um, who had, you know, she was producing miracles of her own accord, doing healings and and she had her own way to do it. And a lot of the wisdom I share with you uh, about these, these other masters I trained with being enlightened, I didn't know at the time they were enlightened. You learn these things after the fact when you have enough you know, consciousness and information to be able to go, oh, wow, those teachers I was training under actually were enlightened. But at that time, I had no clue what enlightenment was. And uh, this teacher, Dr. Master Shah, had come into town and uh, he had a one-day event leading to a week-long event on the Big Island, and it was called a Soul Enlightenment Retreat. Like, wow, okay, Soul Enlightenment? And he even said that, that you would become enlightened. I'm like, well, that's, you know, how does somebody even do that, right? How is it even possible? Uh, so it was, it was intriguing, to say the least. And, of course, my monkey mind was quite busy trying to figure out 
if this was just a bunch of bull or what was really going on. Uh, and so I went to this one day event and there was some communication on soul enlightenment. But a lot of what I witnessed was uh, blessings that were occurring with people who were called up and they were just picked out of the audience and you know what's your pain level and then he would do a blessing and the pain level would dissipate uh, in half or to zero within a few minutes and when you witness three four or five of those you start to question well you know is this real is it a scam what is it so my monkey mind was still busy but he did talk a little bit about enlightenment as well so it was intriguing enough to where I went to this week-long event with this person named Dr. and Master Shah on the Big Island about 10 years ago and um, during this event I received quite a bit more information and I did receive a soul enlightenment blessing so I want to give you a little bit of information on it and then we're going to go into the 10 powers of soul enlightenment so welcome Angela welcome everybody else thank you for clicking the share button and letting other people know about this live stream so during this event um, what I heard and what I witnessed and uh, uh, and what my soul was was experiencing was very unique because I had trained under several other people who I've come to know as enlightened uh, but they were not able to give my soul food you know food you know the kind of stuff that you you, you receive the information and you go wow that's awesome that's the good stuff right there that's the stuff I'll come back again and again and again for that's what I was receiving for the first time in, in you know a 40 plus year search for what's the meaning of life right I finally come across a teacher that was actually able to give information on what is the meaning of life and in the first uh, uh, sentences of the first paragraphs of all of his books he gives you the meaning of life he says the meaning of life is to serve now some of you that might fall on deaf ears like yeah yeah whatever but for me I was at a stage in my spiritual journey where I was like oh my god that's the truth and I was off to the races so during this retreat I did receive a soul enlightenment blessing and it took me about a year or two of training and understanding and asking questions to actually truly grasp what it is I received and in essence what occurred is enlightenment there are three layers of enlightenment there are soul enlightenment mind enlightenment and heart enlightenment we're only going to be focusing on soul enlightenment today and uh, that was all that was offered at that time and what I come to understand was that enlightenment is a process. It is not something that you snap your fingers and boop, there you are, and you're good to go, and you never have to be here on earth again, and you're finished. No, it would be wonderful if it was like that, but unfortunately, uh, I've discovered that it's not. We still have to go through uh, life. We still have to go through some suffering and so forth. Sorry to damper your day. Kind of sucks to hear that, but the good news is we can be made a lot easier. Uh, and a good example is our beloved Jesus, uh, even beloved Buddha. Uh, they have come, you know, and look at how much suffering they went through to get to the levels that they currently are. Um, depending on people's belief systems, you may or may not agree, but in the Eastern cultures, they say that, that a soul lives forever, but the person uh, comes back and does things again and again. Uh, and so, why would someone like a Jesus or a Buddha come back and do it again, go through the suffering again, right? Because they're on the higher layers of awakening. And when a person has become fully enlightened, which is their soul is enlightened, their heart is enlightened. What is heart enlightenment? No greed, no thoughts of corruption, zero selfishness. You're happy to give your shirt off your back, your last quarter, your last dollar to anyone for any reason because you trust implicitly that the heavens will take care of you that's a pure heart very hard to find nowadays what is mind enlightenment another layer of enlightenment that's when you have zero zero lower than zero negativity that's when there is not a singular negative mindset or negative attitude no negative belief whatsoever everything is in perfect alignment somebody could cut you with a knife and you would smile and say thank you I love you that's the highest layers of enlightenment right because you know everything has a reason cause and effect you know there is no accidents a person that happened to would just look at the soul and say you know I love you I forgive you uh, if I harmed you and cut you in the same way some other time then please forgive me this is a fully enlightened being and so uh, we have a long way to go to say the least and so 
oh, the first layer of enlightenment is soul enlightenment. So what does that mean? That means we have done good service, beneficial service, value-based service, good thoughts, not negative thoughts, good thoughts, not gossiping, loving thoughts, not greedy thoughts, not selfish thoughts, not selfish words or selfish actions, not unpleasant words or unpleasant actions. Raise your hand if you offered unpleasant words to anybody in the last few days. I'd be shocked if all of our hands did not go up. Raise your hands if you had an unpleasant thought in the last few days. So these are things that impede us from reaching higher layers of enlightenment. Welcome John, welcome Kay, welcome Kristen, welcome Angela. <clears throat> thank you for your presence and thank you for sharing. Welcome uh, Master Wendy. And so when we start paying attention to our thoughts, our words and our actions, then we can basically halt the, uh, the lack of enlightenment and move higher towards it. So at this retreat I, I told you about when I was in uh, Hawaii, I'm learning these things I'm sharing with you now. I'm like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But this master saying he can give you enlightenment, how is that possible? What he went on further to explain was that as we in our life, and if you believe in it, in future lives, as we uh, clear the blockages from the past by doing forgiveness practices, uh, welcome Angela, uh, and um, asking for forgiveness and offering forgiveness, this clears our blockages from the past. Why does that bring us towards enlightenment? Because it doesn't harm our heart. It doesn't mess with our brain and our negativity. We become more conscious, more loving. Well, kind of common sense, right? So that's one thing we can do. The next thing is we can become more loving, more kind, more compassionate in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Kind of common sense also. But how many of us don't do that? And then he explained that when you repeat this process by monitoring your thoughts, your words, your actions, what you see, what you hear, what you think, basically stopping the leaky body, and you do that consistently, not only just this life, every time you come back, every single time, you have to be better and better and better in your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Serve more unconditionally. Be beneficial to others. Trust that you'll be taken care of by the source. Open your heart. Release the negative thinking, etc. Not one lifetime, but many lifetimes. And what was explained is that soul enlightenment is when your soul moves through your physical vessel, because your soul resides with you, and it moves through your physical vessel up through the channel of your soul houses, or what you might know as chakras. And the soul moves up, up, up until it resides in your heart chakra, which according to Master Shah and according to the wisdom he's received from heaven, is the first layer of enlightenment. This is where the soul is considered enlightened, at least at the first layer. Does it have more? Well, think about it. Is there higher chakras? Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, your crown chakra? So the soul actually has to go up through this uh, process of becoming a fully enlightened being. And uh, at that time, 10 years ago, Master Shah asked Kevin, he said, how many souls have reached uh, full enlightenment where their soul sits above the top of their head and uh, they are fully enlightened, uh, that are living on earth? And at that time, he received the number three. Only three souls had reached that layer of full enlightenment. So that's not a very big number. So to, this is not what the subject matter is today, the 10 powers of soul enlightenment. But to give you a baseline of information to work with, this is uh, what, at least so far in this life, has uh, the Master Shah has taught on what is the, the nature, power, and significance of soul enlightenment. How do you achieve it? How do you reach it? And I would encourage all of you, whenever possible, to attend any of the events and retreats that Master Shah offers via live or webcast, because what helps elevate our soul is a simple thing called virtue. Virtue is positive energy. Virtue is positive messages. Virtue is the opposite of negative messages, uh, karma, whatever you want to call it, right? We want good karma, right? We want good virtue. Whenever you do a good and positive thing, heaven right, makes a note in your records in heaven. Your soul becomes brighter and lighter. Uh, flowers from heaven drop down onto your record. And if you do a forgiveness with others, then also flowers 
dropped out on your record. The souls that may have held some uh-uh-uh with you, they forgive you, okay? And so your soul rises up. Very simple wisdom. We want our soul to rise up. We want our soul to become uh, aware, so where we, we have no blockages, where we're just loving and kind, like our beloved mentors, our beloved teachers before us, uh, beloved Jesus, beloved Buddha, beloved Krishna, all these great souls before us, we, we wish to emulate their light and their way of being. But in order to do that, we have to stop the leakiness. We have to stop the unpleasant choices. So now let's move into the wisdom shared in this book, Divine Transformation. And again, for those that came in late, this is Master Shah, the author of this book. And this is one of 20, I think 24 books now, uh, that has reached the New York Times bestsellers list. So on page 221 of this book, there is a section in this chapter called The Ten Powers for Soul Enlightenment. Now I'm going to read these one by one, uh, starting with the first paragraph. Millions of people are searching for soul enlightenment. Soul enlightenment is chapter 13 of the authority books of his Soul Power series. This is one of the books in his Soul Power series. And the particular book, The Power of Soul, The Way to Heal, Rejuvenate, Transform, and Enlighten All Life. That particular book, chapter 13, goes into more information and wisdom on this. To reach soul enlightenment, he goes on to say, there are ten powers. I would like to share with you this teaching from Lao Tzu. Uh, for those of you who don't, do not know who Lao Tzu is, in the uh, almost the entirety of the world, there is a very famous book called the Bible. And it is, uh, it is dedicated to the wisdom and teachings of our beloved Jesus. And it is one of the most sold books on the planet. It is one of the most translated books on the planet. There's only one other book that matches it in girth, in wisdom, in sales, and in recognition around the world. Well, many of you don't know that. It's called the Tao De Jing. Tao De Jing. And it's written by a person named Lao Tzu. And Lao Tzu is an ancient saint that has reached a very, very, very high level of enlightenment and has brought very high level wisdoms from the heavenly races, heavenly sources, to earth in the form of the book called the Tao De Jing. It has equally been distributed around the world in almost equal volumes as the Bible. And it serves those in the East that are not familiar with the wisdom teachings of the Bible. And so both have a version and a value. This is who Master Shah is referring to here. Uh, he says, to reach soul enlightenment, there are 10 powers. I would like to share with you the teaching is from Lao Tzu, who wrote the classic, the Tao De Jing. For a spiritual being to do Shu Lian, Shu Lian is a Mandarin Chinese word that means spiritual practice, spiritual practice. For a spiritual being to do Shu Lian, spiritual practice, in order to reach soul enlightenment, advanced soul enlightenment, or even reach the Tao, which means the source, there are ten powers to be known, understood, and achieved. Number one, the first is the power of belief. Belief, believe the Tao, believe the source. Belief in soul enlightenment. Believe karma, or another word for that is cause and effect. Okay? What has been done unto others comes unto you. Same wisdom in the Bible. If you believe, you will make great effort to do serious spiritual practice, serious shulian. To clear the blockages brought on by cause and effect. What happens with cause and effect? Let's say you do something that's unpleasant. This is giving a negative message. This is doing a negative service. What is the effect of that? We have negative messages, negative experiences come to us, cause and effect, right? To believe is to recognize these uh, aspects of universal laws are in place and happening at this time. And once you believe it, you can make efforts to dissolve them. 
it is a beginning point. Without this seed, without this wisdom, you cannot enjoy the harvest. You cannot recognize the value of the forgiveness practice. You cannot recognize the value of bringing love to melt all blockages. You cannot recognize the value of moving to a higher layer of enlightenment without this seed of understanding of the law, the universal laws of cause and effect. Universal laws that uh, what you think, what you do, what you, what you are, your thoughts, your words, your actions, what you see, what you hear, all of these that create imbalances at the level of soul, once you grasp this at the level of origin, at the seed level, then you can sow, reap the benefits of this awakening. That's the first step. Final sentence, without this seed, you cannot enjoy the harvest. Belief is the true seed for your spiritual journey to soul enlightenment and to the Tao. So for those who are unfamiliar with the word Tao, do not confuse that with Taoism. This teacher does not teach religion at all. He only teaches soul wisdom. Soul wisdom applies to everyone everywhere because everyone everywhere has a soul. And the wisdom is love. The wisdom is forgiveness. The Tao is a word that represents the source, the creator. That's just another word. So don't square your head around it if you're new to this and you're unfamiliar with the wisdom. The second uh, step or the second of the ten powers to soul enlightenment is the power. The second is the power of giving up. For the soul journey, a committed person who is determined to reach soul enlightenment and the Tao can give up everything. They have to give up everything. Oh, that's a tough one. Shujamoni Fo, she is original Buddha gave up his royal position to search for his spiritual journey. For those in the West that don't know, the, the one called Buddha, the one all the statues, the belief systems are around, etc. He was the son of the king, had his own country that he could rule. He walked away from it for the soul journey. That was his test. Shijimoni Fo gave up his royal position to search for the spiritual journey. Later, he was willing to give up his life to reach soul enlightenment. In China, there have been emperors who gave up their position as an emperor to become a monk. As a true spiritual seeker, reach the same condition. What are you willing to give up? You know, the many teachings release your attachments. Attachments to what? Attachments to I have to have food. I have to have water. Now, of course you eat those you drink those you have to have those to survive But at some point when you are living just off the light, you don't really need them Do you have to have your TV? Do you have to have your radio? Do you have to have your cell phone? These are attachments What are you willing to give up to reach the higher layers of enlightenment? As a true spiritual seeker teach or reach the same condition be able to give up everything without any attachments. Your spiritual commitment will move deeper and deeper. Worry will be reduced more and more and finally eliminated. Short story, uh, the first teacher I trained under was a Korean master. And many centers, many students, many master teachers underneath this Korean master. How did he reach enlightenment? His story, because every one of the master teachers have a story, his story, was uh, that uh, at the age of 12, uh, one of his best friends, uh, him and his best friend were swimming across the lake, and the best friend uh, literally died swimming across the lake because he had a cramp and couldn't swim, and, and he couldn't save his friend, and he drowned. Um, so it devastated him, and he started questioning life, and that one went forward, and what's the meaning of life, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I'm not sure at what age, but he went into the mountains, uh, and. He just said, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to die or I'm going to figure this stuff out. And so he went and found a certain place to sit and, uh, and he would not sleep. He would not eat, he would not drink. He just kept himself awake no matter what. Uh, his story is that he tied his hair to the tree branch above the waterfall that he was sitting at uh, and so he could keep himself awake. And if he fell, he fell into the water, got back up, started again. And... Um, so 21 days went by, and then rush of light come to his body, 
voila, he reached a certain layer of enlightenment. There are many ways to reach enlightenment. That's an example of one. Power number three. The third is the power of discipline. Discipline yourself to stop creating spiritual debts. Discipline yourself by recognizing the law of cause and effect. Do not speak, think, or act in a way that brings harm or suffering to yourself, yourself or others. Okay, this is the first uh, power of discipline. There has never been a single human being who has become a saint without doing this. We have to apply discipline. How many of you can say you do that on a daily basis, right? It's hard. It's hard to watch our thoughts, words, and actions. It's hard to discipline ourselves to not create additional karma. The, the cuss word comes out of our mouth sometimes before we even know it. How do we fix that? The wisdom is, the minute you do anything you know is not right, a thought, ah, oh, I thought that person was, you know, ugly. I thought that person was fat. I thought that person was skinny. I thought that person was too old, too young, too stupid, too smart. Whatever that negative thought was, right? Ah, oh, forgive me, heaven. Forgive me that soul. Forgive me my monkey mind. Dear heaven, please bless me so I don't repeat these negative thoughts, right? You have to catch yourself in that moment. And then heaven erases. E -e 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 -e. They erase that if you're pure in your thought. Ask forgiveness. This is how you stop the, the replacement. You're also making yourself conscious, right? Your negative word comes out. Oh, stop. You know what? That was an incorrect statement I made. That was the wrong words. Please forgive me. Can I, can I have a moment to restate it in a way where uh, it's beneficial for both of us and it doesn't create pain? Okay, you can do that. Persons, I'm sure, on the receiving end is going to be happy to hear nicer words. So we have to be conscious of these things. Thoughts, words, actions. Stop them in the moment. This is discipline, the third power of soul enlightenment. Welcome, Phil. Welcome also to uh, Ranju. Welcome, Shelly. Uh, and welcome, Gloria. Welcome, Niels. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome, Krista. Welcome, Zelda. The fourth is the power of concentration and moving forward. The power of concentration and moving forward. Fully concentrate on your spiritual journey. Do not be distracted from your spiritual journey by anything. This is very important. Your spiritual journey will progress tremendously faster. Now, I offered a blessing to, uh, to a student. And he was connecting to me and he said, you know, I'm going through some stuff. Oh, what's going on and I checked heaven and I said you know what's going on for the student and the problem for him and the problem for a lot of us is he was on the spiritual journey but he also had his physical journey the job the husband the wife the kids the, the generating income uh, dealing with the drivers on the way to work life right and then he had his spiritual life and never the two cross so this was the problem we must learn to integrate our spiritual life with our physical life. Well, I can't tell my mom that I'm studying this because, you know, uh, she's a devout Christian and blah, 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 and they think I'm, I'm, you know, going to hell and blah, blah, blah. You know, we have these kinds of people in our life that do not have enough awareness. They are exactly where they're at in their soul journey. We need to honor them. We need to love them. We need to accept them exactly where they're at. Just because they're not able to honor, love, and accept where we're at doesn't mean we cannot be the enlightened one in the communication. They are where they're at. We need to honor where they're at. And when they come to us and they inhibit us from our soul journey by their thoughts, words, and actions, we smile and we give them love. And we say, thank you. I love you so much. You want to protect me. You want to honor me. I bring this up because... Many of us segregate our soul journey from our life. And you will not move forward on your soul journey the way you need to until you combine them. You need to bring love and forgiveness to your family members. That's combining it, okay? Keeping it from them and doing your own thing 
is not combining it. Now, you don't need to throw it in their face. You don't even need to talk to them about it necessarily, but you don't need to do it in private and silently at all. You can say, I honor your journey so much. I'm so grateful that you and Christ and the teachings you're following are in perfect alignment. Please honor where I'm at because this is what feels good with me. It makes my heart happy. And mom, don't you want my heart to be happy? Can you please be happy for me? I love you so much. This is alignment of journeys. Okay. And you can bring that into your work. You can bring it into your driving. You can bring it into every aspect of your life. Change the segregation. This will advance your soul journey. So the number four, the power of concentration and moving forward, bring your spiritual journey into every aspect of your life. This is an example of how to accomplish that. Welcome, Maria. Welcome, uh, Franz. The fifth power of soul enlightenment is the power of emptiness. During our spiritual practice, Reach enlightenment by removing all thoughts. The power of emptiness. Ooh, that's a tough one, right? How do I remove all thoughts? Well, first of all, you have to sit still. <laughs> not so easy for most of us, certainly not for me. I mean, the amount of meditation I do is very, very little. I do a lot of practices, moving practices, tracing calligraphies and doing a lot of things, but not so much meditation. The monkey mind, right? This is one of the aspects of moving towards enlightenment, the power of emptiness. So since I'm not a guru at this, and certainly I need a lot more value in it, I'm going to do a flow. I'm going to ask Kevin to offer some wisdom through me, and I will learn along with you. <sighs> Dear Heaven, could you please borrow my mouth, offer some guidance and wisdom on... Uh, how to easily employ this wisdom in our lives, the power of emptiness. How this is the happy Buddha. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this is funny because this is the first time he's ever come. So I'm excited. I am joyful all the time. And it is in my joyfulness that there is emptiness. And it is the emptiness that brings me the joy. How can I be joyful all the time? Because I see things through the eyes of the divine. It matters not what occurs in front of me. I wrap it with my love of my arms. I wrap the event and experience with my greatest love and joy. And I see that heaven has a purpose for everything. And in that awakening, in that knowingness, I am so joyful. I don't need to know what it is that is irrelevant. I know from my experience that by bringing joy to that moment, whatever it may be, that I will transform all mindsets, thinking, perceptions, inappropriate or negative beliefs. Anything that I may have witnessed or thought, whether correct or incorrect before, cannot enter my mind because I have already enveloped the experience with love and joy. This allows me to be in the moment with the greatest open heart. And because I bring in that moment the greatest open heart, by what others may perceive as negative, I am able to transform as quickly as possible to the highest light. The love and joy that I bring transforms others' perceptions and energies, and therefore their experience will assist whatever is happening to the highest light as quickly as possible. 
and therefore I joyfully move to the next moment by being in this awakened joyfulness by trusting that heaven has a plan that everything is exactly as it is supposed to be I am able to maintain and be in a place of emptiness where all that enters my mind is heaven's love heaven's perfection heaven's light heaven's love heaven's purity and all of these bring me such great joy that I cannot help but express it to and upon everyone and everything in all time it took me time to get here but it is the greatest happiness I can give to anybody is this wisdom and I will come to you in any moment you call upon me to assist you with the same joy it has been my honor to release this wisdom to you on the subject of emptiness this is happy Buddha <laughs> thank you happy Buddha Wow he speaks with such joy my goodness just such a huge blessing feeling his joy in delivering that message I have to go back and, and listen to that again put it on, on record on my own phone and listen to it every day that's such great wisdom okay welcome Samantha welcome Craig welcome Richard and welcome Gerd welcome Gunnar yeah that's a lot more wisdom than I could have offered you on the fifth power of emptiness so thank you happy Buddha the sixth is the power of stillness to reach stillness during meditation is to attain a very advanced spiritual level in Taiwan a great Buddhist monk went into da ding da ding means big stillness by going into da ding condition he was able to sit for one month in the same position without moving I tell you there's a lot more to this story than you know there are many stories of these monks that go into a great stillness and uh, no food no water they just sit there They're, where are they their soul is out in la la land on some dimension somewhere and their physical body is fine it's just fine why is it fine because the light from heaven is giving it all the nourishment it needs we do not need food we do not need water we need nourishment the food and water are the carriers of heaven and mother earth's life force energy they are the carriers of nourishment but when we become more and more enlightened we do not need food and water we need heaven and mother earth's nourishment which is what is in the food and water but as we become a light vessel those are actually too heavy for us we simply need the nourishment that heaven provides us stillness is attainable I'm not suggesting you run off to the mountains and do some meditation but you might want to look at the emptiness and the stillness uh, blessings that are offered through some of the centers they have special Tao calligraphies that Master Shah has created where uh, uh, light treasures can be transmitted from those calligraphies to us clearing the mindset the monkey mind that inhibit us from getting to stillness and emptiness uh, those are priceless treasures and I do recommend you become more familiar with accessing them the seventh is the power of intelligence the seventh power towards soul enlightenment the power of intelligence and the sentence is this intelligence is your true intelligence it is your heart shining light the heart light brings you true intelligence I have to do a flow on this one that's the entire sentence there's not much more there so I have to do another flow to get a little more wisdom on uh, true intelligence so dear heaven can you please offer more information on this sentence the seventh is the power of intelligence true intelligence heart intelligence how this is the soul of heart intelligence 
I reside in every soul, in every universe. I am originated from the heart of your Creator. Within me and within you is Source Creator Intelligence, Original Intelligence, Life Intelligence, Source and Origination of all life intelligence which includes creation abilities manifestation abilities purity to the degree of becoming a pure light being all of these intelligences are within each of you to develop these intelligences requires you to move into emptiness and stillness to apply the previous powers as mentioned it is in the stopping of the leaky body the negative thoughts words actions the application of spiritual consciousness and awareness into your everyday life the time to move into emptiness and stillness that allows the natural innate energies wisdoms and creator comprehension and understanding to enter your physical experience as the creator's innate heart intelligence enters your life physical emotional life experience you can and will uh, experience the greatest love that you cannot even imagine you will cognize and comprehend who you are in the scheme of this entirety you call life and in this comprehension you will become the Buddha the enlightened one and this resides within each of you at all times and the steps mentioned when applied move you closer you thank you thank you another great slice of wisdom huh because yeah, master Shah you know these are this is this is only two pages of great uh, insights but but not a lot of depth in them I have to go in and ask heaven for the additional insights hope you're enjoying it I am Okay, what is the eighth power of wisdom? This is not normal wisdom. It is a spiritual seeker. To reach this special level of wisdom is to shine complete heart light. To have this level of power means you have reached soul enlightenment. So given the previous information, this one actually makes more sense. So I'll repeat it. This is not a normal wisdom. It is a as a spiritual seeker to reach this special level of wisdom is to shine complete heart light so the previous message uh, says that this is how you reach enlightenment, this is how you reach Buddhahood uh, and this says that when you are there you have that special layer of wisdom so it's hard to describe what is the ninth power of the Tao this is exact words of the Tao what is the Tao the source as a spiritual seeker to reach this level is to reach Tao you will be able to see the creation of all universes from Tao you will literally be able to experience the normal creation and the reverse creation of Tao the normal creation of Tao is source or Tao is one one creates two two is what heaven and mother earth so from source, heaven and mother earth are formed. From one comes two. Uh, 
from two goes to three. What is three? Three is all things. Heaven and Mother Earth create all things. Three then returns to two, two returns to one, one returns to source. So what is creation and what is reverse creation? Original creator creates two, heaven and mother earth, which create all things three, and eventually all things return back to one, which is what we're in the process of now as a human being. So that is the ninth awareness on the process of enlightenment. And the tenth is the power of de. De is spelled T-E. It's pronounced de. It is the action of de. De is the natural rules of Tao. For example, di, qi, shang, sheng, tian, qi, xia, jiang, Mandarin Chinese, translates to Mother Earth qi rises and heaven's qi descends. They are the actions and natural rules of Tao. They are uh, Tao de. So, brief explanation without going into much detail. Imagine original creator like a cloud, a cloud of energy and matter. And at some point in all creation, in all time of creation, Mother Earth Chi rises, a clean Chi, a pure Chi, a pure energy and matter rises, and a dirty Chi falls. What is the dirty Chi? That's us, guys. That is everything else that is in physical creation. Mother Earth Chi is energetic creation, can't see. Then you have physical creation, right? And so then you have the beginning of creation. That's another way of putting it, right? And this is what's referred to here. The, then he goes on to say, they are the actions and natural rules of source, the Tao. They are Tao De. The normal and reverse creation of Tao are also the actions of Tao. They are the big Tao De. The power of De allows you as a spiritual being to achieve total purity and meld with original oneness. It allows you to be a spiritual being. The complete, true, pure, and divine nature of your heart and your soul will then appear. We all have this within us, but it will appear as we align to that, that original wisdom and teachings. This teaching from Lao Tzu is very important for every spiritual speaker. The ten powers are musts, achievements to reach soul enlightenment and then to reach the Tao. So you don't just reach original source where you understand everything and your heart is pure and you are a light being. No, you have to go through layers of enlightenment. First your, your soul becomes enlightened and then your heart becomes enlightened and then your mind becomes enlightened and then you become a pure light being and eventually you merge with the original source creator. This teaching from Lao Tzu is very important for every spiritual seeker. The Ten Powers are a must. Final sentences. Realize the importance of soul enlightenment. The Ten Powers for soul enlightenment are vital. Purify your soul, heart, mind, body. Serve, serve, serve. Spiritual practice, spiritual practice, spiritual practice. Uh, do service Shu Lian. Do service Shu Lian. Do service Shu Lian. Transform your spiritual journey. Transform your physical journey. Reach soul enlightenment. Reach the Tao. For those of you that came in, in the latter half, highly recommend you go back and listen from the beginning. There are some significant wisdoms shared here that you may or may not comprehend in this moment, but your soul gets it and your heart receives it. And as each day goes by, uh, wisdom will come. The final message I leave you with is that heaven literally has given, given us the seed in our heart of source creator seed that the highest possible wisdom of original source creator sits with us and it wants very much to release all that it has to us we just need to do our part stop the negative thoughts words and actions do your forgiveness practices open your heart Mesh your spiritual world with your physical world. Forgive all those that judge and criticize you for wherever you're at in your spiritual journey. Love them for where they're at. Ask them to not judge you for where you're at. Honor and move forward. Mesh the two. Move into emptiness. Move into stillness. 
and then start uh, receiving the messages of the pure insights from inside you because you have plenty of guides and plenty of guidance. So this is the uh, synopsis, the conclusion of today's wisdom and teachings. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I see several of you came in late. I encourage you to watch again. <clears throat> so I will um, be here Sunday when we chant Love, Peace, and Harmony to serve those with the condition of cancer, 6 p.m. Hawaii time, 9 p.m. Pacific time, uh, midnight in the Eastern time zones, 5 a.m. in the UK, 6 a.m. in Central Eastern Europe. It'll be at 9.30 in the morning in India. It'll be about um, 2 in the afternoon in Australia and 4 in the afternoon in Kiwiland. So thank you so much for your presence. Please share. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All the beings of light respectfully return. Bye-bye, everybody.